About a month ago, I was sitting out having lunch by the beach and a lady posted up next to my table and started smoking a cigarette. And she had this phrase on her t-shirt. It said, be kind to animals or I'll f***ing kill you. I think that's like a Morrissey quote or something. I didn't know that at the time and it doesn't really matter because the only thing I thought when I looked at her was if I punched a dog right now, matter of fact, if I grabbed a dog by the tail and I just slam dunked it into a trash can, what would you do? What I didn't understand at the time is that t-shirt was a precursor to rediscovering an age old argument that I thought was over. If I said the phrase to you, carnivores versus vegans, what do you think? Yeah, who f***ing cares anymore? Just eat what you like to eat, right? Wrong. People care. People really care. That whole thing didn't go away because you stopped using Facebook. Matter of fact, you know that famous death and rebirth image that people post after their first time doing mushrooms? A lot of people look at that image and think it's a representation of human life and death and that infinite cycle that just keeps going. But it's not. It's the infinite cycle of carnivore versus vegan. Carnivore versus vegan. You see, that conflict was first born with dinosaurs and then it died and then it came back as the Reebok CrossFit Games and then that died and now it's come back as podcaster versus creator versus, I don't know, YouTuber. A lot of people care about this though. Both carnivores and vegans make some very bold claims. On the surface, these things separately just seem like choices, right? You know, one diet looks like a competition plate that you would eat on Fear Factor. And the other one looks like rehab for a five-year-old who's addicted to chicken nuggets. But apparently, these two things are not just food. They are identity. They have politics associated with them. And then when these people come together, I mean, they get pissed. Look at this Jubilee video. All it took was three words. Look at this. I would kill an animal. Would you kill an, it's five, five words, look. I think there'd be tons of context where I'd kill an animal. Like if a, if a lion's gonna go kill a baby, I'd probably kill an animal. What I say about receding hairline way back, that sentence coming from a hairline that's too far back, you have to question it, man. He might be a nice guy, but you know, if the hairline is too far back and they are very eager about murder, I'm just saying. If I could do something to prevent killing them, besides eating them, like if I was protecting myself and we had to, we had like a, something that we could do to get that animal away, I would definitely try to not kill it. I mean, I, I feel like- If it like comes down to you or the animal, you killing the animal? I would. I would. <laughs> no, they're, they're, they're gonna give up their life. Oh, here they come. They got drumsticks. Why is it always the extreme case when talking about would I kill an animal? Well, like, yeah, exactly. if you were in a, this situation. There aren't lions running around downtown LA. When I was into hiking, there's, there's mountain lions that come and, ki and, and kill people. You've known that, right? Yes. That's in Orange County. Totally. Right? That, that's, not, that's not in the jungle it's in Africa. It's not an everyday situation uh, 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 of but, but, would but, you kill an animal? But, but it's in Orange County. <laughs> Would you kill an animal? Condescending. Whoa. Are human beings animals? Yes. Yes. Sure. Would you kill another human being to save another human being? Yes. It depends, man. That's way too vague. That's where this argument falls apart. You're know, asking me, would you murder a cow so we could eat in and out? I mean, uh, guilty, man. I'm, I'm guilty. All right. Now, if you're saying something like, we got to kill Harry Potter's parents for seven good movies, that put my lady in the mood. Wingardium, goodbye, parents. You might look at that and go, that's just a Jubilee video. They casted some people who are angry. Uh-uh. Look at Reddit. This is from 12 days ago, man. I've been talking about veganism online for some time now. I always have something to say, and when I stop, it is because I'm bored or I find the conversation not worth it. I was talking about the evils of fishing on Facebook. Had some conversations going, but then a dude dropped this on me. Jesus was a fisherman. It's been a whole day now, and I have no idea how to respond to that. What constructive comeback is there? First of all, he's thought about it longer than 24 hours. Fucking cares, let it go. It's some stranger on the internet. Why do you care about coming back from that? Secondly, the fact that he's here going to debate a vegan, looking for backup, it's crazy. He wants to digitally jump this guy for bringing up Jesus in the conversation. That's how fired up the both of them are. This guy goes, people who kill fish are bad. And the other guy goes, Jesus killed a fish once or twice? You gonna talk shit about God's son? Think about that. God's son. That's the only man with more naked pictures in married women's houses than Prince. Every night families get together 
and eat in front of Jesus' nipples. That's how powerful his nipples are, that they inspire communion amongst family. And they're probably eating some fucking fish. Now, I'm not here to say what's right or what's wrong, okay? I'll eat a hot dog with no toppings in a, in a bun if I feel like it. So you can't trust my judgment. But I think there are two things worth bringing up. One, this podcast clip of this farmer talking about if he had to farm avocados, it'd be like 40 acres. And in order to do that, he'd have to kill like 40,000 gophers or something. There are, you know, 50 to 100,000 deaths that happen just to grow avocados. Yeah. And my point is, is that none of us are getting out of this without blood on our hands. Which is wild uh, because I didn't know you could get paid to kill that many gophers. So, you know, not that I hate gophers or anything, but I do think I am a pretty good shot. So if any avocado farms are hiring, let me know. In which case, the guy from the Jubilee video may want to rethink his day job. Why would he do that when he get paid to do the thing that he really wants to do? kill an animal. The second thing and the main thing I want to bring up is the majority of people are probably on the surface, right? They make a dietary choice and they have some strong feelings about it, whatever. But there just seems to be this outlying percentage on both sides where they just gone too far. The worms start to grow in their head. They start to ask questions and make bold claims like going on a carnivore diet, fix my teeth. Or what does cum taste like on a carnivore diet? Mm. Obviously, I'm in no position to say what a certain diet will do for your health or will make you better, but I am in a position to say that the doctors has no problem bringing two carnivores on set and crucifying them. For lack of better words, put them to the stake. Oh boy. Oh boy, that was almost bad as Sussy Baca. Sussy Baca. These sisters go on the doctors and the doctors hate them. Watch this. Two sisters struggling with their health now say eating only animal products has eliminated their problems. Have a look. Hey everyone, I'm Ashley. And I'm Sarah. And we are sisters, best friends, and carnivores. Why is what's her face from Stranger Things see walking at a gym? We only eat from animals. So no grains, no vegetables, no fruit, no fiber. No fruit, no fiber. I know they're backed up. There's no way you could eat steak even seven days in a row and not be a sem uh, let me stop. Let me stop. So let's back it up about six years ago when Sarah and I thought we were doing everything we could for our health, eating super healthy, eating a bunch of whole grains, eating our fruits and vegetables every single day, avoiding fats. And we just kept getting sicker and sicker. Constant inflammation, migraines, chronic constipation, acid reflux, brain fog, fatigue, pressures on my body, poor metabolic health. And we finally became diagnosed with undifferentiated connective tissue disease with symptoms aligning with lupus. Uh, what? Undifferent? I don't, okay. So we decided to go plant-based last summer. Vegan lifestyle absolutely works for some people, but for our bodies, it was not working. Then we switched to a ketogenic diet. We were starting to feel better, but all of our symptoms still weren't resolved. So being the science nerd that I am, I just did a bunch of reading about carnivore and it all started to make sense. So we just jumped in. I really like the taste of raw beef. I love raw egg yolks, love raw beef fat. As I go more carnivore- Yo, your first stop looking at this plate might be, ah, that raw egg yolk on that raw beef, that is $60 at a restaurant somewhere. Someone will pay that and they put like a little, green garnish on top and someone would put go right into that with a fork and mm, mm. like that is acquired taste eating raw hamburger helper since switching to this carnivore way of life all of the remaining autoimmune symptoms that we've been dealing with have been resolved it's just been so empowering to be able to take back our health sarah and ashley now join us via skype welcome what do you guys eat in an average day we eat two meals a day. Typically, it will have some uh, muscle meat, so any cut of steak is fair game. Then we'll have some organs, so whether that's liver or heart. Let's have some unseasoned organs. These women are savages. What is that like for the people they meet, you know? Oh, hold on just one second. I'm going to go heat up this liver. I'll be right back. Oh, is that like a cultural thing? Is it, Were you raised eating that? Nah. I just like eating a raw liver. Right. Yeah, no, cool, for sure. Uh, yeah, I think my Uber's here. I'm going to head out. And I understand you guys also eat a decent amount of raw meat. Is that true? We have had raw food before. I'm sure you've heard of, like, steak tartare. But for the most part, we don't we don't focus on raw foods. We cook most of our foods. Oh, man, I had it wrong the whole time. It's cooked liver, not raw liver. 
Whoops. Symptoms that you were having, you, you felt that you were sick, you felt that you were off. You mentioned that you thought you may have an autoimmune or a connective tissue disorder. Tell us about the symptoms you had when they started and, and why you thought that in fact was what you had. I've dealt with chronic constipation um, since high school. <laughs> I'm 12 years old, man. I'm just thinking she hasn't taken a shit since high school. <laughs> She's going to the doctor. Doctor, you got to help me. I haven't slept in five years. Oh, man. Have you tried eating 12 eggs? So that was one of the symptoms that I was dealing with. It was common that I would go seven, eight, nine days without pooping. Um, so I'd also deal with like bloating, indigestion. <laughs> he didn't even flinch. Media training to the core, not even up. He just days without pooping. So I would deal with what you call the butterfly rash on your face. So red inflammation along the nose line and then rashes on my skin. So I would go out in the sun and develop like a hive reaction almost. I had zero sun tolerance. It was really, really strange. Constant eye infection. So I thought pink eye was like a normal thing for people to get like once a month because it would just constantly happen to me. Stop. Stop. Whatever you're about to say, stop. Just stop it. The reason that I actually went to the doctor to get checked out is because I had been dealing with like a lack of blood flow in my limbs for so long. So my, my lower half of my legs would turn like purplish orange. And then hair would grow out of my neck and my teeth would get really long. And when it was a full moon, I would just... Did you ever see a gastroenterologist? It sounds to me like a lot of these, these symptoms were related potentially to uh, a food allergy or a food intolerance, something like that. She actually went to the Mayo Clinic to get checked out. Yeah, I ate radioactive eggs and they like <laughs> track the eggs, go through my digestive system, everything seemed fine. <laughs> I ate radioactive eggs? Bitch, have you seen Spider-Man? What are you doing? What are you doing? You will turn into a lizard if you f around with the wrong radioactive something. Use your brain. And then along those same lines, um, in our journey of kind of figuring out what was going wrong. We did get a stool test done, so we saw our gut microbiome, what the good bacteria, the bad bacteria. <laughs> he's laughing, he's like, you got a stool test? How long did it take, eight or nine days? <laughs> How much money do you spend on an average week, say, e eating this way? <laughs> Asking the real questions. All right, all right. What's the cost? What are you eating? prime rib it can get expensive when you when you take just a steak on the plate approach so we do include organ meats for that reason they're a lot less expensive and then we always advocate for people to go find their local farmer and because you can purchase a full cow so you can do like a cow share and what this does is cuts the price significantly of what a more popular cut of meat might cost at the market i will just you know it's not that crazy but it's so funny to me first of all how much money do you spend a day is something, you know, that question is reserved for like billionaires telling you not to buy coffee and enjoy yourself. And when you're trying to talk your friend off of smoking weed every day, that's at least in my mind, immediately what I think when I hear that question. And the fact that they didn't give a hard number and that their solutions are so readily available. And the one they land on is, you know, you can go to a farmer and do a cow share. He'll spill that cow's guts right in front of you and you can just <laughs> That's nuts to me. You know, my mother used to eat the turkey neck and all the insides, and it was, what about the yuck factor? I mean, here you're young ladies, you're used to not eating organs. What about that yuck factor? How did you get over that? Like, ooh. Honestly, that was a concern. <laughs> I don't know if it's clear, but do you see the path that's going on here? Hey, you seen a doctor about your stomach? Sounds like you can't. Slush. Um, you guys have eating disorders. Do you still deal with that? What about the part that is nasty? How do you guys get over the part that, you know, society would look at you both as savages and fucking disgusting? How, how do you deal with that? <laughs> like, ow. Wow. I want to look at these sisters and I look at these doctors that, you know, want to skewer them on live cable TV in front of the geriatric and people whose hearing aids may not be fully charged up. It screams something to me. And that is this carnivore versus vegan thing is so tense. People are so pumped about it. So what I want to do 
is I want to settle it. This this is like an open casting call, bro. If you are a vegan and you train in the gym and you may train martial arts disciplines, and if you're a carnivore and you train in the gym and you may train martial, I basically want to have a carnivore versus vegan boxing event. And I want to create a belt, you know, that, you know, king of the food kingdom. And I want competition. I want to see which diet really wants it more. Let's find a healthy way to let this out into the open. And and this belt, it will have to be defended. It will be transitioned. And you know, maybe after a year, we could see just how many times one wins over the other. Or if we get that beautiful infinity picture where it's just one to one. Vegan carnivore. Vegan carnivore. You think I'm joking, but I'm serious. If you want to do this, hit this email and I'll see you in my next video. Peace. Hey, just play, man, I had to switch it up. Yeah, might lose a few, ask me if I give a fuck.